So we, every morning we read Srimad Bhagavatam or sometimes you may call it Bhagavat Purana. So we're reading from the fourth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter number 31. And that chapter is entitled, Narada Muni instructs the Prachetas. 
the Prachetas, there were ten sons of a king called Prachini Bharishat, and they were very fortunate. They got instruction from Lord Shiva, and then they got instruction from Lord Vishnu himself. And then later on, Narada Muni also came to them and instructed them. So we're going to read this verse. Shriyam Anucharatim Tadartinascha Dvipadapatin Vibudhams Yatswa Purna Nabajati Nijabritya Varga Tantra Katam Amum Udvishrajat Pumam Kritagna Alright, so Shri Yamanu Charitim Tadhatinas Cha Dvipada Patim Vibudams Cha Yatswapurna Nabajati Nijabritya Varga Tantra Katam Amam Udvishrijat Pumam Kritagna Word meaning Shri Yam The Goddess of Fortune the Lord is of fortune. Anucharatim. Anucharatim. Who follows him. Who follows him. Tat. Tat. Of her. Of her. Artina. Artina. Those who aspire to get the favor. Those who aspire to get the favor. Cha. Cha. And. And. Dvipadapatin. Dvipadapatin. Rulers of the human beings. Rulers of the human beings. Vibhudan. Vibhudan. Demigods. Demigods. Cha. Cha. Also. Also. Yat. 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 Because. Because. Swapurna. Swapurna. Self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. Na. Na. Never. Never. Bajati. Bajati. Cares for. Nija. Nija. Own. Own. Britya Varga. Britya Varga. On his devotees. On his devotees. Tatra. Tatra. Dependent. Dependent. Katam. Katam. How. How. Amam. Amam. Him. Him. Udvishrijit. Udvishrijit. Can give up. Can Puman, Puman, a person, person. Kritagna, grateful. grateful. Translation, although the Supreme Personality of Godhead is self-sufficient, he becomes dependent on his devotees. He does not care for the Goddess of Fortune, nor for the kings and demigods who are after the favor of the goddess of fortune. Where is that person who is actually grateful and who will not worship the personality of Godhead? Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Lakshmi, the goddess of fortune, is worshipped by all materialistic men including big kings and demigods in heaven. Lakshmi, however, is always after the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even though he does not require her service. Brahma Samhita says that the Lord is worshipped by hundreds and thousands of goddesses of fortune. But the Supreme Lord does not require service from any of them because if he so desires, he can produce millions of goddesses of fortune through his spiritual energy, the pleasure potency. 
this very personality of Godhead, out of his causeless mercy, becomes dependent on the devotees. How fortunate then is a devotee who is thus favoured by the personality of Godhead. What ungrateful devotee will not worship the Lord and enter into his devotional service? Actually, a devotee cannot forget his obligation to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even for a single moment. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur says that both the Supreme Lord and his devotee are rasagna, full of transcendental humor. The mutual attachment between the Supreme Lord and his devotee is never to be considered material. It always exists as a transcendental fact. There are eight types of transcendental ecstasy known as bhava, anubhava, stai bhav, and so on, and these are discussed in the nectar of devotion. Those who are unaware of the position of the living entity and the Supreme Person Krishna think that the mutual attachment between the Lord and his devotees is a creation of the material energy. Factually, such attachment is natural both for the Supreme Lord and for the devotee, and it cannot be accepted as material. Om Jnana Timaranda Syagyananjana Shalakaya Chatsur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vancha Kaupa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patita Nam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Vata Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so these words were the words of Narada Muni. Narada Muni is one of the Mahajans, one of the authorities on the teaching of devotion to the Supreme Lord. And he had gone to the ashram of these young men, the Prachetas, and they had asked Narada Muni to help them. They said, we're be we've become very bewildered by the material energy, and we need to hear from you. Please enlighten us and help us to get out of the illusion of attachment to the material world. And so these instructions are very important for all of us, because we're often in that condition ourselves. In fact, nearly all the time we're in that condition. We're very attached to the material energy and we think about enjoying and being comfortable here in this world. But we have to understand the nature of our existence here, that we have taken birth here and we will have to leave here one day also. We don't know when. Some people leave earlier, some people live later. but. For everyone, we have to leave. We say, as sure as death. Death is sure. The miseries of material existence mean birth, old age, disease, and death. So these things are there. Because we all took birth in the material world, we have to also accept that sometimes there's going to be disease, 
in course of time we're growing old and one day we will die. Where will we go from here? Nobody, a lot of people never think about it. They never think about where we're going to go from here. After this life, where will we take our next birth? So it's very important for all of us to understand human life. Human life is very special, very fortunate. The Vedas describe how there are 84 lakh different species of life and only 4 lakh are human species. So we are fortunate to have a human body, but we're even more fortunate when we get association with devotees. Like the Prachetas, they were very fortunate. They got association with Narada Muni and he's explaining to them about the real mission of human life and how to make proper use of this human life. That it's not just make a lot of money and get more digits in our bank balance, it's not just living comfortably here, but we have to consider our spiritual life also, that we're all eternal spiritual beings. And we've had many births. We've taken birth in many different species of life, in different conditions, all over the creation, not just in this planet, but in many different places, sometimes we would be in the higher planets, away up in Swarga Loka with all the devas, and sometimes we'd be way in the bottom with Yamaraj, you know, you know Yamaraj, the god of death? There's higher planets in the top of the universe and the hellish planets are in the lower part of the universe. We're here on the earth planet, it's in the middle of the universe. Here's, here's the map, you can see if you're interested of the whole creation. There on the top is the spiritual creation and here's, this is Vaikuntha, this is Goloka, Krishna's planet. This Vaikuntha means place of Vishnu and here's the earthly planet the, at the bottom. We're here in the bottom and there are many, many universes. And in each and every universe there's many, many planets and on each planet there's so many people, so many living entities. We're so fortunate that we have a human species, a human body and we're on the earth planet which is very special planet. Bharat Vars is there, the, the Yamuna river is there, the Ganga is there, very special places. They're all there on this planet for our benefit, to help us to become purified and to become enlightened. We have to take advantage of the facilities which are given to us. Therefore, 5,000 years ago, Lord Krishna came and at that time he spoke Bhagavad Gita, spiritual knowledge, not just for Arjuna, but for all of us. And we were reading just now from Srimad Bhagavatam, which is written by Srila Vyasadev. Srila Vyasadev is a, an empowered incarnation. He's empowered to write books and he writes books about the personality of Godhead. He describes not only the personality of Godhead, he's he wrote many books, but the book which was his culmination, the, the sublimation of all of his uh, realizations, it came in the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's described as the ripened fruit of the Vedas. The Vedas are like a tree, a big tree. You know, if you have a tree with no fruit, they're not very valuable. But when the mangoes start to grow on the tree, then you, you take care, right? If you have mangoes growing on your trees, you want to watch out for the fruits. You have a dog there, <laughs> nobody should come and steal the fruit. So the fruit, the fruit is the valuable part of the tree. The Vedas are just like the tree. 
But the fruit, the fruit of the tree, that is Srimad Bhagavatam. It is the cream of the Vedas. And so Srila Vyasadeva wrote that. It's in his mature realization, he's teaching to us the importance of bhakti yoga, devotional service. Bhakti yoga begins with hearing and, and then chanting. Just like you've come here this morning, you've come to hear. We heard the Maha Mantra, we heard this morning we were doing some of the, the little ceremonies which we do in our temple every day. We worship Krishna, we offer a little arti, then we worship Tosi Maharani. Tosi Maharani is a sacred tree, a holy tree. You keep Tosi in your home, you can all keep Tosi in your home. She'll grow nicely here. And by keeping her in your home, your home becomes auspicious. It's, it's very beneficial to keep Tosi Maharani in your home. And even though your home may not be sattvic, may not be completely pure, but still you can have Tosi at home. Just keep her in a clean place and take care of her and water her. As we did today, we poured a little water on her and we offered the main thing is she wants devotion. It is devotion which is important. Just like this morning we read, the goddess of fortune is there in the, uh, and she's the consort of the Supreme Lord. She's the consort of Lord Vishnu. So many people, great kings and so on, they're all worshipping the goddess of fortune. But they're not worshipping with pure devotion. They're worshipping her with a more of a, a selfish mentality. They're praying to her, give me, right? Mm -hmm. Give me, give me your blessings. They're, they're asking her, bestow your wealth on me, give me some, don't forget me, give me wealth. They're offering some articles for worship. But the, the nature of their worship is very fruitive. They want to get something from the worship. You know, just like if a man says to the woman, I love you, I love you. But he's thinking all the time, where's the money? <laughs> you know, is that love? That's not real love. Usually it's the other way, the woman, <laughs> the woman, the man will say to the woman, I love you, and she may be thinking, where's the money? Yeah, in both ways it works. Some women are very rich. <laughs> but the point is, the motivation is not love. The motivation is to get something. That is called cheating religion. We call it kaitava dharma. It is not real worship. It is cheating work. And the Lord is not very pleased. Naturally, you won't feel very pleased, you know. If your child comes to you and says, Oh, mommy, you're such a nice mother. I love you so much. You're so good. You're so kind to me. And then she said, Can you get me a new handphone? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, we may say nice words just to flatter someone to get something right? That is not pure. So we want to understand what is pure love? Pure love is simply to give service without any thought of what I will get back. That is the meaning of pure love. That when you simply give, you just want to give without thinking what I will get. That is the meaning of pure devotion. And that is what is being taught in Srimad Bhagavatam. And that is also taught in Bhagavad Gita. Lord Krishna says he can only be approached by devotion. Devotion means, actually the real mean, devotion means service. One who has devotion, they will want to do service. They will want to do, how can I serve you? You know, you know that sometimes, you know, a uh, couple are married and they have children and so on, 
and something, the husband comes home from work after a long day, comes home and he finds the house is in a mess and the children are all running around, they're not doing their homework and there's no food prepared for his supper and the wife is sitting there and he says to his wife, what, what's going on, what are you doing? And she said, oh, I'm just thinking how much I love you. <laughs> I said, well, you love me? Then do something, clean the house, take care of the children, you know, cook the supper, like that. And so love means service. The same way we talk about love of God. If we love God, we will want to serve Him. How can we serve Him? In this age, this, the proper way to worship Him is through the chanting of His holy name. The, so that while we were performing the worship, we were offering incense and flower and so on. It, it's not the offering which He wants, but it's the devotion, it's the, off, the mood of giving love to the Lord. That is the important thing. It's the attitude which we have. We want to have the right mood in our worship. That we are simply offering these things for His pleasure. God is a person. Just as we are persons, He is also a person. He is the supreme person. We are not supreme. We are tiny. He is very great, but we have a relationship with Him. He is the master, we are the servant. Our duty is to give service to Him, to please Him. And we please Him by love and devotion. And that devotion is enhanced. We can increase our devotion the more we sing His name. Because by singing the names of the, of the Lord, we will associate with Him. He is in His name. When we call His name, He is there in the name. And when we associate with Him, you come in contact with Him, we will become pure, we'll get purified. Just like if you have a metal bar and you put it in the fire the metal bar will become hot, red hot, like the fire. And after some time you can take the metal out of the fire and it will burn, it can burn just like fire. So the same way when we chant the holy name, and you can chant any name, you know, we are devotees of Krishna, we chant Hare Krishna mantra, we follow Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who taught everyone to chant Hare Krishna mantra. You may like to chant other names, it's up to you. But different names have different values. Just like in the Vishnu Sahasranam, some people like to chant the 1000 names of Lord Vishnu. But in the Vishnu Sahasranam, Lord Shiva said to his wife Parvati, Rame Rame Namo Rame Sahasra Nama Bistu Yam Shri Rama Nama Varanini. Lord Shiva is saying to his wife that you don't need to chant 1000 names of Vishnu, just chant one name of Rama. 1000 names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Lord Rama, one holy name of Lord Rama. Lord Shiva told his wife Parvati, it's there. In, at the end of the Vishnu Sahasrana. Over this year, a lot of people are worshipping Lord Rama. It's very popular. Many people are going to Ayodhya to see the temple there, they want to see the deity there, and more than ever before. And even more than ever before, people are reading Ramayana. <laughs> become popular. So there's fashions, you know. <laughs> In the past, many people used to worship Lord Varaha. Lord Varaha was popular in South India. We like, you can see here Lord Narsingadev. We were chanting also the, from uh, Gita Govinda, Dasavatar Stotra, Dasavatar Stotra, ten incarnations of Vishnu, the fourth one, Lord Narsimha. So we were singing to Lord Narsingadev. 
is very popular. People like Nishingade. In Mayapur, we also worship Lord Nishingade. So different forms of the Lord are there. According to your particular nature, you, you may be inspired to worship. Some people like to worship Krishna as a cowherd boy. They will worship him even as a child, Bala Gopal. They like to worship the little child holding the sweet ball in his hand. And other people, we usually, we like to worship Krishna in the threefold bending form playing the flute. As uh, Vamsi Marli Dar Krishna, Vamsi Dara Krishna. So that's Krishna. Krishna, of course, is Nava Yovana. He's eternally youthful. He doesn't get old. He has a spiritual body. Our bodies are material. The body, our body is just the covering of the soul. This body which we have, this is our karma. The result of our past activities arranged this particular body. And the same way in the future, we'll take another body. Bhagavad Gita says, for one who, is, one who is born, death is certain. And for one who is dead, they will take birth again. Where, where will we take our next birth? What kind of body we will take? It depends on our activities. What do we do in this lifetime? How much uh, service can we do for the Lord? How much have we developed devotion for Him? Because at the end of life, the subtle body is there, the mind. Now the gross physical body is going to die, but the subtle body is there. Subtle body means the mind, the intelligence and the ego. And that goes with the soul at the time of death. When we give up the body, the subtle body goes with the soul and it carries our desires and will take us some other place to take birth in some other form. So we have to be very conscious of this and we have to be careful what we're thinking and what we're doing in our life because it's sowing the seed for the future. And the Christians also, although the Christians say they don't believe in reincarnation, actually it says in the Bible, as you sow, so shall you reap. In other words, the farmer sowed seeds, they will get the results of those activities, right? In Hindi, they say, jaisa karega, aisa parega, <laughs> right? And in every country, even in China, they have this saying, they say, in Chinese, they say, shan yo shan pao, e yo e pao. I mean, you do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. We have a little intelligence. Intelligence tells us what is good and what is not good. Krishna is in our heart. He's speaking to us. He's telling us, this is not, you shouldn't do this, you should do that. Krishna is giving us, because the, there, the soul is there. And so there are two souls. It's like two birds in a tree. One is the individual soul and the other is the super soul. Like two birds are sitting in the tree. One bird is eating the fruit and the other bird is a witness. Krishna as a super soul, Paramatma, he's a witness to all of our activities. And we're like the bird which is eating the fruit. Now sometimes the fruit is good, sometimes it's sour, right? So the same way in our life. Sometimes we you know, feel good and we're happy and other times we're miserable and suffering. We, we get the results of our different activities. So we want to be very conscious and try to do what is right. What is the proper standard for behavior? People say, oh, everybody's doing this, everybody eats meat, everybody's a meat eating meat, I also should eat. Just because everybody eats meat doesn't mean we have to do it. The, we could say the blind follow the blind. We have to know what is proper. 
what's the proper food for human being? And you study the body, you study the anatomy of the body, the nature of this body is to be vegetarian. We're meant to be vegetarian. And people, oh no protein, there's so much protein. The elephant doesn't eat meat, look at the body of the elephant. <laughs> So we have to understand these things properly. Sometimes people don't, don't I mean, sometimes we may, may be challenged like this, but we can answer the, the questions. So we hope all of you are understanding this Krishna consciousness. We are eager to try to introduce Krishna consciousness again. Initially, we used to have our, our center here in Geneva. In the very beginning, the devotees first came here to Geneva and Srila Prabhupada came here and he spent 10 days here in Geneva. And so, after some time, the devotees decided it would be better to go to Zurich because it's more industrial city, more people and so on, easier for them to distribute literature and so it meant that they closed the center here but now we, we want to again reintroduce Krishna consciousness here we want to maintain regular programs and distribute Krishna consciousness all over Switzerland there are pockets of devotees in different places and they're having programs so def we don't want to overlook Geneva, a very important city, international city, and we definitely want to have our presence here. So we're very happy to see all of you take an interest in Krishna consciousness. Are there any questions? Anyone? Yes? Prabhuji, can you um, share uh, any experience or anything with uh, Srila Prabhupada that you had, his dealings or anything specific? Do you want to know about what my feel, my interaction yeah, with Prabhupada? Prabhupada? Maybe one or two mm -hmm. you can share. Well, yeah. you know, see Prabhupada had many disciples, so he couldn't let everyone mm, get so close to him, you know. he would, you know, I was very young and I was very new and Prabhupada was very, very senior, you know, he was in the seventies and like that and I was twenty something, you know, I was a very young boy. So I didn't know anything, I was very new. So I, whenever I was with Prabhupada, I would just try to hear him and listen to what he was saying, different things. Well, one time uh, I was in the temple in Vrindavan and the Krishna Balaram temple in Vrindavan. So it was lunchtime and Arti was going to begin. So there were not many people. You know, those days in 1970s, Vrindavan was quite quiet. It was not so crowded as it is today. So many people there today. But the temple was new and there was not so much people living around as it, as there is now. Anyway, it was midday RT and so I started to lead the kirtan. I was just playing the kartals and there were only a few people in the temple room. And Srila Prabhupada was in his house at the back, behind the temple. He was not even in the temple, he was in the house at the back. And what happened, uh, I was leading the kirtan and then after a few minutes, his secretary came from his room and said, Srila Prabhupada wants to know, why is nobody playing Madanga? <laughs> well, I, I was surprised because, you know, he wasn't even in the temple, he was away in his house, you know, but he was listening and he, he said, no, the must, the Prabhupada had told his secretary, go and ask them, why is nobody playing Madanga? When you have kirtan, you must have Madanga. Someone must play the Madanga. <laughs> so that was one instruction Prabhupada gave. And then another time, uh, in 1977, Prabhupada was in very poor health. He was very weak, you know, and he was just laying down. But he wanted devotees to come and chant for him all the time. So 
you know, we would take, we had like a, a, a schedule and we would go and sit and chat. And we only had very small cartels, very tiny cartels. And, and there was no madanga also, it was just tiny cartels. He just didn't want any, just because it was just a private kirtan, you know. So two of us, myself and another devotee, we were allowed to go and to chant for Prabhupada. And Prabhupada was laying there, you know, and his, he wasn't, he was very weak, he wasn't moving around much. It was his final year, you know, a few months later he left the body. Anyway, we were chanting and uh, we were singing Hare Krishna mantra, but suddenly the, the devotee, the other devotee I was with, he started to sing another mantra. And Prabhupada opened his eyes immediately and said, only Hare Krishna. <laughs> He, he was singing something like Govinda Jai Jai, like that, you know. But but Prabhupada said, only Hare Krishna. He just wanted Hare Krishna much. So that was another instruction. Mm. Sometimes, you know, morning times, sometimes we get to go for a walk with Prabhupada. Prabhupada liked to go every morning <coughs> for a walk. He was very regulated wherever he was. Uh, he would he would go for a morning walk and come back in time for the deity greeting. So we'd go for a walk in the park and sometimes he would talk and sometimes he would just chant japa. Sometimes he would talk, sometimes he And we would cook for Prabhupada, we would be cooking for him, uh, we, we would make Usually he would take, in the morning he would take some fruit and maybe a sweet. Depending on the weather, if it was very cold, he may take a little cereal. Yeah. Uh, and lunch would, would be rice and dal, chapati, and some sabji. And he liked things like loki sabji or portal sabji. Sometimes he liked also samosa and we would try to make samosa and we'd send it to Prabhupada. He'd say, no, no, pastry is not right, you haven't got the pastry right. And then he'd say, the filling, this filling is not very… You know, he, he was very expert. He tr tried to train us in all of these things. And he was also concerned about the accounts, the temple accounts, because like in London, we're a registered charity, we're registered as, with the Charity Commission, so every year our accounts have to be audited. So it's very important to keep our registration. So Prabhupada was very concerned, he said, let me see the accounts. <laughs> and he would check the accounts to see it's all been done carefully. Another time, oh, another thing happened, uh, when, we, when I got initiation, uh, we were about more than a dozen people, we got initiation together. There was only about 20 people staying in the temple at that time. And maybe two people were initiated. And so he, Prabhupada came and he was going, giving, initi giving us all initiation. So what happened was that after the initiation, they, they called the temple president. <laughs> And the temple president was a, a devotee had come from America to, to help us, to train us. So he said to the temple president, he said, you know, I gave all these devotees initiation. He said, none of them gave me any Guru Dakshin. <laughs> <laughs> and the temple president laughed. He said, Prabhupada, they don't have any money. <laughs> and so that was the the condition of our movement in like 1971, 1971, more than 50 years ago. Our movement was very new and we were very young and the temple, you know, it was a rented house and we were struggling to pay everything. Anyway, Prabhupada understood, he laughed. He said, let's see, British Empire. <laughs> they took all the wealth from India. And here you are, no money. <laughs> so
So Prabhupada said, yes, he said, it's okay. He said, then you have to give your whole life. If you're not going, going to give, he said, you give your whole life. So those are some things. All right, any other question? I have a question. I was speaking with Sis Hararata and she came up with a, with the subject of forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness. Uh, if you forgive, the person, it's good for me, uh, I give away some good energy, but the person, she received the, she, it's good for her too. Yes. Uh, so the question is, uh, Sometimes I can forgive because I'm so much egocentric and I don't like the person. But that means I keep, I keep the poison in me, right? I keep this bitterness. Bitterness, yeah. So how can I overcome this mind? Sometimes brings me where I don't want to go, and you know there's a yeah. The question is how to control the mind to help, help him to do what what is good for me. Mm. And sometimes we, people will say, I can forgive you, but I will not forget. <laughs> <laughs> so that's not very good. Mm. And so forgiveness is a, a very important quality. Certainly we have to learn to forgive people. Somebody does something wrong. What should be our attitude if someone has done something to you which you feel was not nice, not just. We should think, I must have done something to him in the past to deserve it. Mm -hmm. That they're doing like this to me, they're repaying me for something I must have done previously to them. In other words, we should be tolerant. In the Lord Chaitanya's Shikshastikam prayers, he said, we should be tolerant like a tree, as tolerant as a tree. The trees tolerate the heat and the cold, the wind and the rain. The trees co tolerate people cutting them, breaking the branches, but still they give shelter, still they tolerate. And so a devotee should be like that, should be tolerant. And we should offer all respects to others and not expect any respect ourselves. That is the mood of a devotee. And that verse is so important, we're told we should put that verse on a thread and string it around our neck for constant remembrance. We need to be tolerant, we have to tolerate. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also describes about tolerance. He said, just like winter and summer seasons, you have to tolerate them, you know? Now it's coming to summer, but winter will come again. You have to tolerate. So we have to also tolerate sometimes difficulties and un un something is done which you feel is not just, somebody is offending you. Don't get all upset about it. Take shelter of Krishna, chant the holy name. And we, we, tolerance is required. Forgiveness, yes, we, we, we should learn, we should learn to forgive. We should learn to think that I must have done something to deserve it. And we're grateful that it's using up the karma. My karma is reducing because they're doing something like that to me, then it's reducing my bad karma. I have a question regarding this point. Uh, sorry, maybe you want to say something. Uh, you want to speak French? We have a translator. Uh, can we think that we could also, in certain circumstances, have to forgive ourselves? 
Forgive ourselves. Yeah. For stupidities we know we did. And which are, which are heavy on our shoulders because we did it. Yeah, not well. Only, not only towards someone else, of course, we could also forgive, uh, ask for forgiveness to the other person, but some stupidities we did in our spiritual life, we shouldn't have done. Mm, yeah. Yeah, we have to be cautious, cautious about that. Forgiving yourself, being too, you can be too, too slack on yourself, you know. Well, I couldn't chant my rounds today. Oh well, and it, you know, <laughs> I have to forgive myself. We do need to put more efforts onto our own self. Of course, you don't want to touch a strain that you break down. We have to know our limits, we have to know what's, what we're able to do. So sometimes you may have to forgive yourself. You may be sometimes very sick, you may be in a condition health-wise that you're not able to do things where you usually do, usually chant a lot, but maybe due to health you're not able to chant so much. So sometimes we'd have to forgive ourselves. Guru Maharaj, one more question. Uh, how we can uh, balance the household duties and Krishna consciousness chanting the, uh, together? Uh, mm. Yes. Well, it's important. Both are important. You have to balance. So we give the example about the train on two tracks. You know, if the tracks are not level, the train will turn over. If, if we neglect one and that, you know, we're not using monorail here. So you have to be cautious and keep a balance with the material duties and the spiritual duties. And both are important. You have a family, you have a home, you have to take care. And you have to, you have to do your duty. At the same time, you know, you also want to be a devotee, so you have to, you have to balance the two things. Mm, yes, yeah, not easy sometimes, all the time, not easy. <laughs> <laughs> trying to please everyone, trying to keep everyone happy can be difficult. We want to please Krishna, we want to please the spiritual teachers. At the same time, you can't neglect everybody in the, your family. One day they'll just kick you out. <laughs> you have no home. <laughs> well, you have to take care. Balance the two. There's a lot of always balance required, like in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said, don't eat too much, don't eat too little. Mm -hmm. Don't sleep too much, don't sleep too little. You have to balance the same way your, your activities. You, you know, you're not, a, you can't completely give up the material duties. And you're not ready to do that, you know, it's not, not expected. So you have to keep a balance, you have to do both, keep both sides. Gradually, gradually in older age then you can go more into the spiritual activities. And by the end of the life, you know, when you're ready to leave the world, you want to be fully, at that time, fully dedicated to the spiritual activities. But in the middle of your life, you know, while you're in the middle of the life, you have to balance the material and the spiritual. You can't neglect. You have to, you have to all, just like the gopis. The gopis are all women, you know, and they're also doing a lot of duties. They have their children, they have their families. 
they're milking the cows, they're doing so many, but they're remembering Krishna. They're always singing songs about Krishna, they're always chanting the holy name, they're remembering Krishna's pastimes. And there's the, there's the Yagnapatnis, the Yagnapatnis, the wives, the wives of the Brahmins, and that when Krishna was hungry, they came running with food to give to Krishna. But Krishna told them, go home. He sent them home. They didn't want to go home. They wanted to stay with Krishna. But Krishna said, no, no, you go home. You go back to your husband. Stay with your husband. And Krishna said, it's okay, they'll take you back. They were thinking, no, our husband doesn't want, he won't take us back. And Krishna said, no, no, they'll take you back. You can go back. So Krishna, although the Yagnapatnis, they were great devotees, they had pure devotion for Krishna. They were, when Krishna, they heard Krishna was hungry, they brought all the food which was prepared for the Yagna, they brought it all to give to Krishna. They prepared the food for the Yagna, their husbands were doing some Yagna, but they heard Krishna and Balaram was hungry, they came running with the food to give them. So that was their spontaneous love for Krishna. So that's good that you have that love for Krishna. But you have to maintain, you have to maintain the material life also. You have to keep a balance. related question to what Mataji was asking, that if we are so busy in our household work and want to maintain Krishna consciousness, how to uh, maintain that, um, you know, how to smell that, like how to keep Krishna in the mind, always, they say that, because we forget by doing our work, or even like in, in the office, but we forget Krishna, and then suddenly he will remember, so how can we maintain that, you know, always remember him? Well, uh, sadhana is important, you know, the regular practice, right? If you begin the day, you know, and the, if we begin the day by chanting and, and hearing from scriptures, then it helps us to remember Krishna throughout the day. Yeah, you have to go, just like Arjuna, he had to fight. But before he goes to battle, Krishna says, first of all, think of me then go and do your duty. So first thing is fix your mind on Krishna. Maharaj Ambarish was a king and the first thing he did was also fix his mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. Savaimana Krishna Pararavindaya and then Vachamsi Vaikunta, then do all the other activities. But first thing is bring the mind to Krishna, first thing. And then consciousness of Krishna will naturally come in the course of the day. You can be chanting, you can be singing songs of Krishna, and you can be remembering different, we try to remember slokas from the Bhagavad Gita, recite them, and sing different songs about Krishna. It's very helpful to keep your mind on Krishna. Okay. So we'll stop here? Yes. Do you want to maybe do one round of Hare Krishna chants? Really? Yeah. Have you got beats for yeah. you? I, I get the beats.
about the last question. Association is quite basic. It's important, association with other devotees. I can read, I can chant, I can, you know, do so many devotional things, but association with, with someone who is a little bit advanced, or that's important. Otherwise, I'm a little bit in my... Yeah. Oh, association very important. So that's why associate, we can associate with Krishna through the holy name. We can associate with Prabhupada through the books. So we get association. It doesn't have to be somebody. You can get associate with Krishna by chanting his name. You can associate with the deity. You can associate with Prabhupada's books. That association is there. Of course, you get somebody, some person, it's also, it's also good. <laughs>